If you are a JavaScript developer and you're looking for an easy way to train a machine learning model for object detection and use it locally in your web app, then this is the right video for you. Hi, I'm Sasha. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about advanced analytics, machine learning and cloud computing, Start now by subscribing to this channel and hit the bell so you get notified when I release a new video. A while ago I released a video about how to use TensorFlow.js to do image classification with a model hosted locally in your browser session. Today I would like to go one step further and show you how to do object detection locally in your browser session. And to create that model I again use a service called Custom Vision. So let's have a look how to do that. Okay, let me first show you what we are going to create. So this is an extremely simple web application, which has just a button to pick a picture, as well as a predict button. Let's pick one of the sample pictures I created. And you can see that picture contains a couple of Azure logos. When I click on predict, the model is running the prediction and showing what objects or what stickers it detects, as well as yeah, what kind of stickers those are and the probability it thinks this is an Azure function sticker or an app service sticker. So let's have a look how we are able to first train the model. And to do that, I'm using again a service called Custom Vision, which is at least for testing and playing around with it completely free of charge. So let's sign in. And I'm just using a Microsoft account to log in. So as you can see, I created already a couple of models as well as the one we are going to use in this project. But let me show you how to completely create a new one. Let's call it YouTube Yogo Logos. And I can, of course, not only give it a name, but also a short description. I can tell it which resource I'm going to use to train that model. I can use, for example, also a completely free resource to do that. So let's pick that one. And I want to do an object classification. And as you can see down here, there are several options, which kind of object detection do I want to do? For our case, logo would definitely make sense. But since we want to export that and use it in our browser session, I need to pick one of the two compact models. So let's pick the first model. And then I again can select what kind of export capabilities I want to use. And in our case, of course, we want to use TensorFlow. So let's pick the basic platforms and create a new project. And in my video description, I'm going to give you a link where you can find the images and logos I'm going to use to train this model. So let's pick a few images and I'm going to provide you a link where you can find those images to download it and test it by yourself. So let's just pick those photos, click OK to upload them. And the service will show me a thumbnail of some of the pictures I want to upload. And it's telling me that I want to upload 107 images. So that's fine. So let's click Upload. Great. And the 107 images are uploaded. So let's click done. And as you can see, there are some features in there which help me to tag those images. So let's go directly to the first one. And there's also a helper functionality in here. So if I hover over those things, it's telling me that this might be an object or that might be an object. So then I can, for example, just pick the selection and tell it, yeah, that's a logo of an Azure function. Functions. If I return, same here, click on that and pick the one I just selected. And I can go to the next image. Click this one, that's also an Azure function, that one, that's an Azure function. Go next. But I can also not only use the provided object detection, but I can for example, create my own one. For example, this one that this is also an Azure function, tweak it to my needs, go next. I use the provided frame. I can also tweak 
those and so yeah that's an azure function that's an azure function using this one yeah for, for example currently it doesn't detect it in here so let's frame that and go on and as you can see that's a pretty time consuming task and therefore i prepared already a complete set of images which are already tagged so let me move to that project going back to my project overview and selecting the compact edition. So all those images, as you can see on the left-hand side, are already tagged. And I can, for example, filter them to only show images where a CDN sticker was present or a Cosmos DB sticker. So the next thing I need to do is really train my model. So I can just click on train, select what type of training do I want to do, quick one or an advanced one where I can specify the maximum amount of time, for example, 24 hours. So train the whole model for 24 hours maximum. So I'm defining more or less my training budget, but maybe I don't need the whole 24 hours to train that model. So it will stop training when it thinks that the model is good enough. And I can also let the service to drop me an email when the training's done. So I can come back to that portal and then download my model. So let's go for the quick training and just click train. And because I don't want to wait until this is done, I prepared already a complete trained model. So let's go to iteration one. And as you can see, this is really the test, the evaluation of that model, for example, mobile apps, and it found 52 images. And you can see the precision of detecting the recall of that evaluation of the model to detect mobile apps and so on. So getting some information. And it also is telling me that I would, might need to take more images of these special texts to increase the quality of this model. And you also get an overall information about the precision of the model in general, the recall of the model in general, as well as the mean average precision. And I can also do a quick test, again, picking my one of my two test images. And it's doing the prediction and telling me this is an Azure function, an app service, again, an Azure function, a storage sticker, or Cosmos DB sticker, as well as a list of probabilities of those stickers and so on. So giving me some capabilities to test that right away in the browser. But I said already in the beginning, I want to use this model in my browser app. So therefore, let me export that. And I've got various options. What kind of forward do I want to have that model exported to? And since we're using that in TensorFlow.js, I pick TensorFlow. And again, I can pick what kind of TensorFlow. And let's pick TensorFlow.js in the beginning. Export that and downloading the exported model. And this model is around about 40 megabytes large. I think you can imagine downloading such a large file in the browser session is not the best idea. And therefore, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a slightly different approach, which makes it a little bit faster to download that model into your browser session. So let's have a look. I downloaded the file and unzipped it, and it contains some basic information. So uh, the manifest, the labels, so since it gives me back just an index, it's telling me the active directory is labeled zero, app service is label one and so on. So some labels in the end, just to license how I can use that model. So in the end, I can use that pretty much anywhere. And the two main files, which I'm going to use in TensorFlow.js, first of all, the model JSON, as well as the binary file, so the weights bin. So let me switch to Visual Studio Code to show you how I integrated that model into my web application. In this web application, I'm using Node.js to host my static web content. So therefore you can pretty much integrate that anywhere. I'm just using that for debugging purposes and so on. So I created a folder where all my static web application files are in. I added a folder called model where I added the content of that zip file and some other files where I'm going to dig deeper into right away. So let's look, have a look at the index HTML first. I'm just using Bootstrap and jQuery to create that simple web application. So therefore just some code to show the progress bar, do the image selection, having a predict button and showing the selected image. 
as well as some text to import some JavaScript, of course, some jQuery, the bootstrap stuff. But the important thing is I added TensorFlow.js as the main library, as well as my local target classes JS file and my predicted JS file, which I'm going to show you. So let's go to the target classes as well. I'm just using the text file, which I got back from the service, as well as a simple dictionary, which just contains the indexes, as well as the labels, which I want to show on top of my detected objects. So let's have a look in the main JavaScript file, the predict logic. Of course, I added some code, which just loads the image, shows it in the image, uh, in the selected image flag. So that's nothing unusual. And after the website is loaded and ready, I'm using a function run by jQuery, which is really loading my model. And the main thing is using the TensorFlow library, which are added in the HTML page to load the graph model and sp and point it to the model.json, which I added in the model folder. I also want, because the model is pretty large, show the progress of that loading. So I added a function for that callback, which is just displaying the percentage it gets, it gets via parameter and just displays that in the progress bar. And after the model is loaded, I'm checking if this is a version one or a version two model, because the custom vision service just has two different types of models. And I want to cover both. Version two is definitely faster, a little bit more straightforward, less code I need to write, but I will dig into that in a second. So let me go down in the coding file. And by the way, I uploaded all the code I'm showing here already on GitHub and I'm going to add the link to the description so you can download it and test it. So let's continue. So here's the function which is mainly doing or mainly initiating the prediction when I click the predict button. Of course, I'm checking if the model is loaded, if an image is selected, and then I'm just showing the progress bar, telling it to start the prediction. And after that, I split it that into three segments. One is really loading the image, one is predicting the logo, and one is highlighting the results on the web page. And then I'm hiding the progress bar. So let's go through all of those three functions. Let me start with loading the image. That is pretty straightforward. So I'm just showing again that I'm pre-processing the image on the progress bar and loading the image as pixels in a variable. And after that, I want to get the required image size in the model. And therefore I'm just asking the model for input zero and give me the shape of the model. What I do next is transferring that image, the pixels of that image into a TensorFlow object. So into a tensor. And since this is an RGB image, I specify that this is a three, so three channels and get a tensor with that image back. Up next, I'm going to resize the image using the image size. And after that, I again need to check or use the check I did while loading the model if this is a version one or version two model. And if this is a version two model, I can just use it as it is. And if not, I need to reverse the channels of that image, which means that I'm taking the RGB image and making it a BGR image to use the old model style. Up next, I'm really doing the prediction. And again, that's pretty straightforward. It just, I just need to, again, a little bit doing some, some updating of the progress bar and then just execute that asynchronously. And if this is a new version two model, I also have to specify what channels I want to get back. In this case, I want to have the detect boxes channel back, the detect scores channel back and the detect classes channel back. If this is an old model, I have to do that in a completely different way. And therefore, this is just a huge bunch of code and I won't dig deep into that one, which is more or less a workaround to still work with a version one model. And therefore, I really have to iterate through all those values coming back and in the end, get those three channels out of that version one model back. So the boxes, the scores, and the classes. So this is just a workaround if you still have an old model. And then I just return the predictions back. And in the third step, I just need to visualize the detected objects in my image. 
And therefore, of course, if I ran the detection before, I need to remove the highlights. And after that, I'm just iterating through the predictions and drawing the boxes. And therefore I need to calculate the left, the top, the width and the height and just draw the frame. And therefore I'm just defining a new P tag, doing a little bit margin, using of course the CSS styles I, am, I added in that project and then just use a div tag, specify the left, the top, the width and the height of that div and add it to the image overlay tag in here. And then I push that to a list of children, which makes it easy to delete the previously detected models in here. And that's about it. So let's have again a look how that looks when it's completely done. So let me refresh that page so you can see the loading model, which was pretty fast. I can, can pick a new file. Let's pick, yeah, yeah, let's pick that one for example. So let's click the predict button, running predictions, detecting everything, and I detected those two logos. And of course, downloading the model was pretty fast because I ran that whole project locally. But if you upload that to a real web server, then downloading those 40 megabytes might take some time depending on the bandwidth you have with your current connection to the internet. So therefore, let me show you a way how to optimize the download speed of the model. So let's have a look at our model files again. Currently, we've got one large weight spin file, which is around about 40 megabytes large. And I want to split that file into smaller files so I can download them in parallel, which is in most cases way faster than downloading this large file. And therefore, I'm going to use a tool called TensorFlow.js Converter, which is normally used to convert models out of the regular TensorFlow framework and move this model into the format of the TensorFlow JavaScript version. So let's first download the model in a TensorFlow format. Therefore, I'm back at the portal, click on export, click TensorFlow. And in my case, I want to have that as a saved model. So let's download that and click on download. And again, that file is round about 40 megabytes large. So I downloaded that file. So let's have a look. And again, that file is, as I said, round about 40 megabytes large. And in this case, it's a protobuf file. And I created already a virtual environment for Python and downloaded the TensorFlow.js framework. For that, I just need to do a pip install TensorFlow.js. And I did that already, so it should, should just tell me that it's already installed. And then I can use the tool TensorFlow Convert. So let's quickly move through that command. So I'm just calling the TensorFlow.js underscore converter command, specifying that the input format is a saved model. And I want to use that for serving that model and the folder of that model files are TensorFlow saved model and the output folder, which shouldn't be there, will be TensorFlow.js minus model minus converted. So let's execute that. And this command just converts everything into the TensorFlow.js format. So let's have a look at the content of that folder. And as you can see, automatically it's splitting the large binary file into 11 smaller files, which are round about four megabytes large and are easier to download and consume because the TensorFlow.js framework will download some of those files in parallel and this will definitely speed up the process. So I can just take exactly this folder, add it to my existing project, get rid of the old one and it will just work like a charm. But in this case, downloading the files in a much faster speed. And if you're interested in more videos like that, just hit on one of those two videos which I'm displaying here on the screen and see you soon in one of my next videos.